Before you can clean the fish, you've got to catch the fish. Good eating here. There we go, yeah, they have grown. Previously on Northwest Fishing Fanatics. Go out in the shop. Come. Come on, shop. Shop. I am really excited about this next fishing trip. But before halibut opener, I am going to venture out and catch some rockfish and possibly lingcod. So I need to get a couple of these rods down. Knock the dust off of them. I need this one. That's a good lingcod rod. <sighs> Another good lingcod rod. You won't believe this. Look. Oh my goodness. This is, oh my goodness. <sighs> or the rack that I was holding my rods on broke. And that's why it fell. And I have another electric reel over there, the 750. I think, I think I'm gonna take that down right now just in case that happens again. Need my bottom fishing gear. Also, you'll understand here in a minute, full of jig heads and pipe jigs. I do have to get one other thing, my fish finder. I gotta get the rods in the boat, gotta get my fish finder hooked up, and then I want to pull the boat out to uh, make sure the engine starts. It's a brand new motor. Uh, it's only a couple years old, probably has 20 hours on it. Uh, but uh, we'll pull it out anyway and make sure that thing starts up, runs good, check everything out on the boat to make sure it's fine before we venture out offshore. I managed to fix my reel. It was busted up, had a broken wire. Uh, man, it took it all apart. Uh, got it all put back together. It works, and there she is, ready to rock and roll. Let me set this down here. All of my jigs here are in terrible shape. I like these things to be all, you know, clean like that, and so I'll hit them with the, I'll hit them with the wire wheel over there on the bench. I cleaned these things last year, got them all cleaned up, put them away, uh, and then since last year, these things rusted because condensation uh, was created with this sealed box here for some reason. But I'll get these things cleaned up and I'll show them to you when they're done. Makes me a little nervous. <laughs> a little nervous when I'm cleaning up these giant hooks on this wire wheel. Can you imagine one of those things come flying back and going right through your hand? Oh. Gotta have a good grip on them. <laughs> you imagine one of those bad boys getting slung out by that, that wire wheel there and going right through your hand? Woo hoo! That would suck. Okay, so I got them all cleaned up, but the, the pipe jigs are not gonna be used on this first adding for bottom fish, I mean for, uh, for rock cod. So I'm gonna stick with the smaller stuff for that. I might throw down some jigs, these guys right here, with some grubs on them, these big worms. And these are big, this is a, I think this is 16 ounces or 18 ounces, but, um, we're good to go with the, the smaller ones. I got these cleaned up, got these all cleaned up. As I made these, I kind of went through uh, different stages. I said in one of my American Lake videos that I suffer from being perpetually dissatisfied. So I'm always trying to improve things. So as I was making these pipe jigs, I decided to experiment and make something different. So you can see that these have, these have rattles on them. They all have rattles. And as you can tell, they sound pretty cool. This one, this one here, come on. This one here not only has this rattle on the hook, 
if I hold this one still, you'll get here, you can hear it. And that's because I put a two inch piece of tubing, smaller tubing, brass tubing inside here with a couple of stainless steel ball bearings. And so this is a super rattly pipe jig. And guess what? It doesn't work any better than the rest of them. The fish don't care. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of cool. As you can tell, I like white and black. These uh, seem to work the best. Then I just pair these up with these jigs, just like this one, just like this one here, and uh, the lean cod and the halibut kill them. Let's get this thing out. We're being surveilled. So this is a brand new motor. It's a 2000 and, oh God, what is it? A 2020, 2021, something like that. I had an old Merc two-stroke on it, and that that old Merc two-stroke actually worked really good for, for a few years uh, until I got stranded out there and had to get towed back. You don't want to do that when you're out in the ocean. Anyway, uh, it's got a brand new motor on it, only about 20, 25 hours, probably not even that. And I rebuilt a trailer that I bought. This is not the trailer that came with the boat. I completely rebuilt this thing added brakes to the back axle. Uh, they can't sell them with brakes on one axle, but I bought this one and put brakes on the back axle. Uh, rewired all the lighting, installed a wash down system for the brakes. So all I have to do is hook up the hose right here and it flushes out the brake. Let's hop inside. So some of the changes I made were, were pretty big. This thing has a new transom. A complete new transom back here. It has a new floor. I had him rip out the entire floor. Uh, new foam. Stringers were pretty good. He had to replace just one or two back in the back here, down by the uh, but the by the bilge. Uh, new foam, and I had him extend the floor out and make a, a, a kick, basically a. Um, a toe kick. It used to be like this. It used to be like this all the way down the entire length of the floor. So when you're standing in the boat, you have a toe kick and you're standing uh, right up against the, the gunnel uh, and it's very safe. So you're not leaning out because there's not enough floor space. So it's very comfortable now. I did some other upgrades in here. Reinforced, reinforced the upper deck here because I carried this extra uh, 30 gallon fuel tank. I also added a couple of uh, coolers underneath the seat right here for storage and for elevation to get it up off the floor. And I have shock absorbing pedestals to make a nice smooth ride on the ocean. I also added a two meter radio. For those of you who don't know, it's a ham radio. And then down here in the bilge, it has a scoop there's a through hole scoop. That was really nerve wracking installing. I had to drill a one inch hole in the hole, but that is for supplying uh, water to the, to the wash down pump when you're on the move and water for the bait tank when you're on the move. Also, for safety purposes, I had that bad boy right there. 3,700 gallons an hour. That is a massive pump. And there is a reason why that's there. And when we're out on the water fishing, I'll tell you why. Actually, I'll tell you why when we're crossing the bar. Very important to know what you're doing when you cross the bar. And uh, I'd like to thank Mike for helping me understand uh, the safest way to do that. So before I went out to the ocean in my own boat and crossed the bar, either on the Columbia or Grays Harbor, you know, at Westport, I picked his brain for a long time, went out with him five or six times, maybe even more, before I felt comfortable enough to do it myself. Uh, I had to, had to learn, you know, tides, winds, uh, all that, you know, to make a, a safe bar crossing. The thing is, when you're fishing with someone else, 
the captain relies on making sure the crew is safe. And so it's all on the captain to make sure that the conditions are, are, are safe enough to go fishing that day. And if the captain screws up and uh, doesn't use uh, his common sense and puts you know, his crew in danger, you know, that's on him, not the crew. The crew is depending on the captain to know what they're doing. And so um, I made sure, I, I actually learned from a bad experience as well, and I'll tell you that later um, in somewhere when I start rambling on, you know how I am. Um, but uh, it's up to the captain. So I wanted to make sure before I took, my, took someone out in my boat that I knew what I was doing and I felt confident enough to make the right choices when I'm out there. And so I'm thinking that this, uh, this Monday or Wednesday are going to be good days to go out uh, based on tides, swells, wind direction, and wind chop. And so all those things are going to factor into my decision on where I go, when we launch, how far we go, and where we, uh, where we fish. Well, Ruger, we need to get this thing fired up. Come on. Down. Come on. Now, I just need to get this kicker right here hi let's check the marine zone forecast now let's go to the actual zone forecast so wednesday northwest wind to 10 knots that's really good wind waves one to two feet which is not bad and we have a west swell three foot at eight seconds so that means that we have a three foot swell and they're eight seconds apart that's going to be a really super flat ocean so what we want is we we want to have the seconds apart at least double the uh, swell height. It's going to be awesome. What do you say? Well, here we are, we made it. We are about 20 miles from port. And I am joined today with these two gentlemen. Where? <laughs> you know Bobby, you've seen him before, and I think actually maybe even Tim. We are here doing a little bottom fishing for rockfish, black rock cod, and link cod. All right, then. One of these bad boys on there. Oh, if you than, uh, if you were a link hut, you would love to eat that, wouldn't you? Huh? Oh, yeah. Damn right I would. <laughs> then put that on the bottom. We can only have two hooks, right? We can only use two hooks. I think in California they can use three. Send it down? Um, yeah, you may as well. We're not over top of the hole yet. We still got a little bit of, probably we're 50 feet off the spot, but yeah, you never know. Yeah, just send it down at the bottom. When you hit the bottom, um, just bring it up and just start jigging it up and down. And then I'll put another one on here. Should be able to hold bottom pretty good because the wind's not blowing too bad. Look at that. Oh yeah. 
You know you want it. It's edible. Hey, it's a lingcod. It's a, lingcod. It's a little lingcod. How about that? Let's get him up in here. Watch your rod. You want? Now there's no minimum size on these, and you can get two of them. So it's up to you. What would you do? Keep it or? I think I'd let it go. <laughs> Long arming a little link cod. Things like maybe what 22 inches, something like that. Hey, let's measure it. There. Measure it and then we'll send it. Put her back now and we're not going to keep it. 19. Oh, 20. yeah, 19 or 20 inches. Okay. Go get bigger. See you later, link cod. We're not even on the hole yet. I can't believe he hit on that top fly, too. That's kind of weird. All right, what am I doing? I need one of these things. I need a fly. Did you put a fly on yours? Yes. Okay. Did you put one of those orange ones, like this one? Yep. Those are the ones that are, always seem to work the best. Tim's got a fish on. Well, that's a link cod. It's a little bit bigger. There's a little more substance. Yeah, just pull her in, grab that jig and yank her in. <laughs> there you go. Another link cod. It's kind of small, but like I said, it's up to you. Yeah, get two you get two of them. Well, yeah, we're hitting them early. I'll probably release. All right. There you go. Come on. Oh. There he goes. Whoa, he was gone. Okay, let's pull up so I can move again. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's definitely a link. Oh, it's a big rock, black rock cod. Holy moly. That is a big black rock fish. Wow. That is a nice one. We'll have to keep that. Is it on the jig or on the worm? It's on the uh, fly. Holy moly. Look nice at the thing. size of that thing. That thing is freaking huge. Picked him up on the drop. That's cool. As soon as it hit, it was like bam. This is actually link cod number three, and we're going to let it go. See you later, alligator. You know the old saying, don't leave fish to find fish? Yeah. Obviously we have fish here, but not in the numbers I'd like to see. What's it feel like? It feels like bigger than the last one. Hard to say though. It's a little shaky at first, now kind of limp. It went limp, did it? It went limp. <laughs> All right, a little tuckered out. Bobby went limp. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I wasn't sure what the rating on this video was. <laughs> <laughs> it was PG or... Uh, I guess that doesn't really matter anymore. It really it's doesn't. GG, government guided. Yeah. Parents. I like that. Hit the spot and drop it down, bam. Got a fish on. Oh, Lincod, you want that one. Oh, you want to keep that one. It's not really big, but you probably want to keep that one. What do you think? Fish and chip. Hey, man, you get two of them. <laughs> nice fish. Just throw it in there. Yep. What's the biggest ling you've got? Oh, like 28 pounds. I don't think I've ever caught a really big one. Oh, they're awesome when they're that big. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be the biggest one so far. Woo!
Here she comes, and it's a halibut. Serious? Yeah, that's why it was fighting good. Halibut on the fly too. A halibut Jeez. on the on the fly. Can you believe that? Well, it's your lucky day, halibut. <sighs> halibut, no good. Unfortunately, we can't keep halibut. Can you hand me the pliers there? That's why that sucker was putting up a fight. It's actually too small for a halibut anyway, but that's pretty cool. See you later, halibut. Woo, look at that bendo. Got your two pole endorsement so you can watch my rod there, Tim? I do, I do, yes sir. Okay. Always legal, okay. every step of the way. Okay, awesome. Oh, it's a link cod. Yeah, it's a Oh, he's hooked really good too. Here, let me get him in the boat for you. Oh, you'll want to keep that one. Yeah. Okay, nice fish. That's a really nice one, yeah. Here they come. Gonna chase us down. Ooh, another black rock cod. Ooh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Come on, you got one? No. I'll get it on the rock. There's a black rock cod. Come here, Mr. Rock Cod. The wind has definitely picked up and has caused me some problems here. Tim's got another fish on. Immediately. Keeping this. <laughs> you got to get it in the boat. Come on, man. Oh, it's through the lip. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hook this little jig right to myself, and that'll guarantee. There we go. Yeah. And there's another nice sized rockfish right there. Get that baby up here. Come on. <sighs> Grab it like a bass. Just like a bass. A sea bass. Ooh, Bobby's on. We got triples. Trips. Cheers. Here. Let me see. Yeah, good job. Bobby's got one on here. Well, well we're in the fish. Okay, well, we found him. Hard night to find him up here. But it's just hard to stay on them with this wind. Hold that sucker up when you get a chance, just real quick there, Bobby. Ah, nice. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Fish on, fish on. Fish on. He's got a little spunk. Wow, where's he going? <laughs> Where does he think he's going? Here, welcome to the boat. 
Come on, baby. Here we go. There's another one. Oh, that's another nice size. They have grown. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting bit. Oh, you got yourself another link card. Bye bye, link card. Go grow. Go grow. Oh, I think I'm getting bit. I'm getting bit. Look at that. I'm not even paying attention. I'm getting bit. That's the way it's supposed to work. Come on, baby. Oh, it just came off. There's a group of troublemakers right there. Oh, yeah. They Look at them. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that was weak. Oh no, I'm stuck. No, I'm stuck. Oh no, I'm stuck. I gotta back up. Backing down. I lost it, damn it. Lost it? Yep. I'm gonna go back up in that spot. Back and down. <laughs> Ooh, Tim's got one on. Tim's got, we got a double. A double and a rockfish. Bobby's rockfish. <laughs> oh, this is a keeper for sure. Shit, this one is fucking taking drag. Ow, 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 hold still. Dude, what you got there, man? I don't know, but it is. Woo! Yeah, that's a good one. That's a keeper. Keep the tension on there. Yep. <laughs> Oh, that's a beauty, dude. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Nice. wow, that was a that, That's a nice one. Get that thing on hook so we can get a glamour shot. We need a glamour shot of that bad boy. That's All right, I'll unhook it. I literally just released tension, the hook popped out. <laughs> See I that? Love it. Not in the mouth. <laughs> oh, bonk him. Here. Get a bonk on that bad boy. Woo, yeah. No, no falling in now with that fish. You stuck? Yeah. Let me get you unstuck. What's our count, Tim? That was fun. <laughs> Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. One more? Four more, but only big ones. Only big ones from now on. Actually, it's kind of what we've been doing anyway, right? Let's see what I got going on here. This one's just been, oh, I, oh, got got I got a double. I got a double, but they're babies. What number is that? Uh, that would be, we have 17 in the cooler, so now we got two on the deck, so we have two to go. 19. Which one's bigger? We managed to put 21 rockfish in the boat in just a, less than an hour. 
and we're gonna do some catch and release now. Actually, I think we can use two more link cut, right? I think we can use three more link cut. We need three more link cut. Link cut is good because you can you can deep fry it. And it's not really super fishy, or you can just bake it and it's it tastes good. Yeah, it's got more of a like a, a thicker texture. Yeah, and not so grainy. Real flaky. Do you think it would be a, a mistake to try to can some of the bass? I have no idea. I've never heard anybody doing it, but that doesn't mean anything. That's how I like to eat it. I got a little close this time, huh? Well, there you have it, folks. We put our limit of black rock cod on the boat and four or five link cod, something like that. Nothing really big, but awesome. Glad you were here to join me and my friends. And until next time, see you on the water. Bye now. Your rod wet. Anything to say? Not nothing final that, words? Nothing that witty. <laughs> okay. Let's do it again soon. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button, and uh, till next time. Bye now. You don't want me to say things like that. I don't care what you say. <laughs> so you can actually say Fine. what you want, man. What if what if you do really what if you really really like it? Will you keep it for personal use? <laughs> <laughs> Let it cross right there. Thirty nautical miles. Thirty nautical. Thirty. Yeah, we got to run thirty miles. What do you think? About 30 miles. 15 miles an hour? Uh, we might be able to hit probably 22. Hmm. We got the wind to our back. It's a northwest wind. So we're going to have the wind to our back. Well, it's not too choppy. Of course, lay it in. So let's get started. Let's get these back in the cooler so they stay nice and cold, and we'll show you on one of them. First thing we wanna do is make sure you have a nice, sharp knife. Okay, then I'm gonna make the first cut right by the gill plate here, right behind the gill plate, underneath. You gotta get right underneath that really super strong uh, skin because they have these massive, Scales. The scales are huge. Get it in there, come up to the head, like so. Come down around. I don't even get these. Come down around, be careful with your knife, and come down around to behind the fin. Same thing on this side. Get underneath that those scales. Come all the way to the head. And then go from this cut to that cut, like that. 
and you can, you can see you can pop the head right off these things just like that. Okay, so. Then I take the knife, come down along the back side. All the way down as far as you can go, come in here. Okay, then from here, what I do is just go down to the spine. Excuse that noise right here. I live on a really busy street. And just start peeling back from the top of the spine. And you'll see the spine there as you start filleting. Working it up over the rib cage. Basically, following the rib cage here till you get to the skin. Then of course, cutting the skin away. So what you have left, right there. Okay, so repeat that for the other side. In order to get the skin off of this, like any other fish, Of course, that goes in the bucket. So you have a nice, clean fillet that, if you wanted to, you could trim some of you could trim some of this off like that. But other than that, that's what you have. And just do that the same for the other side because rockfish tend to get worms in them and they're not bad for you as long as you cook them all the way. But if you find any in there, just take your knife and carve them out, pop them out and you're just fine. I use uh, rock cod for, rock cod and ling cod for deep fried fish fries because I think they taste the best. They're uh, kind of fishy. So if you eat this by itself, you know, try to, you know, uh, bake this or broil this, it's gonna be kind of fishy. All the batter and the seasoning, it kind of, you know, um, softens the fishiness of the flavor. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be a lot more ocean fishing coming up here. Uh, we're gonna have tuna, salmon, um, bottom fish with uh, deep water link cod and halibut where we fish in 700 800 feet of water uh, and uh, those link cod there are going to be big and so are the halibut so stay tuned and i'll see you on the water